Harriet Yelverton slowly slipped into madness. She talked about the land of eternal ecstasy, which she saw in her dreams, and about the essence, energy-binding alien worlds. Harriet's husband, Milton Yelverton, taken by the stories of Lustga, would write down the contents of her visions. His notes contained mysterious symbols and plans of an unknown construction. Harriet died giving birth to Milton's son, Benedict Yelverton. Depressed after his wife's death, Milton committed suicide. When Benedict grew up, he inherited the entire Yelverton fortune, as well as his father's notes. The land described in them began to fascinate him. Benedict found out that in order for the conjunction of Lustga and our world to happen, a building would have to be erected, one of a structure mirroring a building from the land of eternal ecstasy. Working off his father's notes, he commissioned the construction of a huge mansion in the state of Pennsylvania. The final condition for the two worlds' connection was sacrificing a child born of a seeing, a person whose mind has always been connected to Lustga. Benedict knew that he was the child of a seeing himself, but he wasn't going to sacrifice himself. He wanted to enter Lustga as a hero, not an offering. He decided to find a person possessing a gift similar to his mother's. He organized a group which began searching. The association, taken by the information about the world of Lustga, soon transformed into the Cult of Ecstasy. The search for a seeing, however, did not bring results. The members of the Cult of Ecstasy discovered that Benedict himself could be the ritual offering. Benedict grew to despise the cult, believing it to be a bunch of rich degenerates. To not allow the conjunction of Lustga and our world, Benedict committed suicide. That way he foiled the attempt at sacrificing him. A few months later, a boy was born, the child of Benedict and a servant working in the mansion. Willard Yelverton despised his mother from a very early age. As a teenager, he killed her and joined the Cult of Ecstasy. After a relatively short time, he became its leader. Willard resumed the search. In an old Yelverton house in a secret locker, he found letters written by his grandmother, Harriet Yelverton, and her lover. He discovered that Harriet had a child out of wedlock. Willard traced the bastard's genealogy and reached Amanda Moon. He began following her. Even a brief encounter was enough for Willard to feel her aura. It turned out Amanda had inherited the gift of seeing the essence from Harriet. Doreen Austerlitz, professor of psychology and philosophy, well known for her various controversial pseudoscientific publications, becomes acquainted with Benedict Yelverton to investigate the subject of his mother's madness. Doreen has already encountered similar cases working on her book. She investigated them with fascination, and a striking number of similarities between the visions occurring in various unconnected people has brought her attention to the topic of other dimensions, including the land of Lustgau. The journal of Milton Yelverton, Benedict's father, turned out to be true treasure for her, containing numerous descriptions and even figures regarding Lustga. Doreen wrote down her knowledge in her work titled Nature of Universes. Milton Yelverton's journal contained varied information regarding opening the gates of Lustga, the land of eternal ecstasy. Benedict wanted to make the conjunction happen, believing it to be his father's wish. For the gates of Lascada open, a child had to be sacrificed, a child of a seeing, a person sensitive to the energy emanating of Lustga. Doreen Austerlitz, for years having searched for any information about other dimensions, began to see a chance to experience true happiness and be released from the shackles of humanity. She decided to help Benedict in the search for a seeing. For that purpose, Doreen used her various contacts, including those from the Academia. Doreen Austerlitz passes the attained knowledge on to people who joined the search for the seeing. Soon the association, along with Benedict, begins the preparation for the Ritual of Transcendence. Numerous meetings, during which Doreen shared the fascinating knowledge of Lustga with the guests, soon began to attract people from the world of business and politics. Afraid of unnecessary growth of the association, Doreen grew reluctant to accept new members, making the group more elite. It was then that the association finally assumed the name Cult of Ecstasy. 
Not able to bear the weight for otherworldly pleasure, the members performed more and more promiscuous orgies. One of the ascended, La C, found that the visions written down in Milton Yelverton's journal came from Benedict's mother, and if she was a seeing, that meant that the child supposed to be offered to Lustga can be Benedict himself. Ever since the association reformed into the cult of ecstasy, Benedict stopped attending the meetings, leaving control to Doreen Austerlitz, who quickly named herself the cult's guru. Doreen ordered La C to capture Benedict and bring him to her. Benedict, however, foresaw this turn of events. To prevent being offered as a sacrifice, he committed suicide. Several years later, Doreen Austerlitz discovered that she was terminally ill. She knew that she would have to leave, and the mission would probably not end within her lifetime. Doreen saw no proper successor among the members of the Cult of Ecstasy. Using her psychological knowledge, she set a young boy raised in the mansion, Willard Yelverton, against his mother. Manipulating the child, she did everything she could to make him a sociopath set only on one goal, opening the gates of Lustga. Doreen Austerlitz died with a smile on her face. She knew that Willard Yelverton, the monster she had created, would complete her work and lead the cult of ecstasy to its destiny. Beings of Lustga discovered a way to modify their minds and bodies to great extent. Their god-king, Yalva Brark, decided to perform a series of obligatory operations aimed at transforming every creature of Lustga into creatures crawling in eternal ecstasy. He believed it to be the only way of experiencing eternal happiness. Zadarithes, along with his castle of the Omniscient, rebelled against the God King's decision. A war broke out, and the castle of the Omniscient lost. Yalvabrak did not, however, destroy Zadarithes. Instead, he changed him into an enthralled, a creature that feels nothing, and its only purpose is to serve the changed and give them pleasure. Soon, many more shared the tragic fate of Zadarithes. The remaining members of the Castle of the Omniscient and its many followers also became the Enthralled. The God King Yalvabrak introduced his plan. Forced mutation of creatures took place throughout the entire land. The entities born of this are the Changed. Their purpose is receiving sexual pleasure from the Enthralled and devouring their used-up bodies. Yalvabrak also performed the transformation on himself. The change, however, was not total. He left a fraction of his old self to allow rational thought. That way he would experience less pleasure than the changed, but would retain his free will, which had not been animalized. Right after this transmutation, Yalvabrak named himself the Lustful God. Ages later, when any remains of the former intellectual civilization of Lustga are almost gone under wild overgrowth, the last submissive die out. Deprived of their toys and food, the changed, for the first time in centuries, cease to feel satisfaction. In order to lengthen the life of Lustga, the lustful god strengthens the essence of his world so that it is felt throughout other dimensions. In the energy beginning to embrace other dimensions, he shows visions full of instructions for opening gates to Lustga. The Lustful God aims to attain new submissive this way, so that they may fuel the satisfaction of the changed. <laughs>